In this video, I wanna show you how to make a toilet paper food sculpture. In this case, a donut. So I have toilet paper. It really doesn't matter what kind. I have a little spray bottle that actually comes in very handy, but you could just use a cup of water as well. Now to start off, I'm gonna take some toilet paper and I wanna make sure that I'm using just a dry toilet paper for the center part because that will prevent mold from happening later. And I'm just gonna kind of group it together here and twist it a little bit so it kind of stays together to create the center part of my donut. So you can see I'm kind of putting it in a ring here and just kind of twisting the sections together and this will be the, the middle part of my donut. I can use a little bit of water to kind of help stick it together. I'm gonna continue with some dry toilet paper and I just wanna kind of wrap this around my donut here just to kind of thicken it up a little bit so that it will be ready for the layer of wet toilet paper. I'm being very gentle when I do this as to not rip the shape that I already have. And if something is not quite staying, you can always add a little bit of water to help it stay. But you see I've got the main shape of my donut now I'm going to start adding some wet pieces to start the sculpting. So you can see I just sprayed this piece to get it damp. It's not soaking wet, but it's not it's you know wet enough to kind of stick. And I'm really gently putting it along the top part of my donut. You can do this like single piece by single piece, or if you're comfortable working with more pieces together, you can do that too. But I just want it to be a little bit damp, and I'm gonna just very carefully try to get it to go around my donut. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can do the same thing by just kind of sprinkling some water on your fingers and then patting the toilet paper too. That can help get it to stick together. The water just basically acts like a glue. Also just gonna spray my entire donut to kind of get it nice and moist. Now I really wanna avoid getting everything too soaking wet because then it will take forever to dry and that's when kind of mold can happen. So we wanna keep it so that it's damp but not like soaking wet. That's another reason why I started with the inside circle of the donut using dry paper because that will kind of keep it light and airy. You can see you can kind of flick water at the paper so that it's not super super wet and then I'm just trying to really gently Put it around my toilet paper. You can see here I accidentally ripped it. I wasn't being gentle enough, not a big deal. I'll just add another piece over the top. And hopefully that will help kind of seal it in place. My goal here as I add the wet toilet paper is to make sure that I try to get the top as smooth as I can. I'm going for a nice smooth frosting, right? So I want my donut to look smooth and not too bumpy or lumpy. I am leaving my donut right side up the whole time. If you wanna focus on getting the bottom nice and smooth, you can too, but since the donut will be sitting like this, I'm not too worried. I'm going with a little bit of a larger piece this time. I just wanna make sure that everything is nice and solid that my donut's not going to fall apart so making sure to just try to kind of wrap it around smooth it out you can always add a little bit of water to help smooth things too but I just wanted to make sure all of it was covered and looking nice and put together I 
like so. Now I let it dry and I actually let mine dry for quite a few days. You can see this is what it looks like when it's dry. It's very lightweight. I have a, a thick brush and some craft paint. This is acrylic paint and it works really well for covering the toilet paper. So because this is a donut, I wanted to start off with kind of a, a donut color, like a, a tannish color. So I'm using brown and I'm mixing it with some white so that it's a little bit lighter. And I'm starting along the bottom edge of my donut. I'm not actually gonna worry about the underside at all. I just wanna worry about the sides and the top of my donut. I am trying to get into like all the little cracks and crevices of the toilet paper because you can see it did not dry perfectly smooth. Um, so I wanna make sure that the paint really covers all around the edges. For me, it worked best to lift up my donut. I am really trying to be gentle as I paint too, because it's still kind of fragile. It is after all, just made out of toilet paper. So the, the toilet paper has hardened, but it's still like overall a light and soft shape. So I wanna be kind of gentle. If the toilet paper kind of starts pulling apart, I just add a little bit of extra paint in there to kind of keep it so that it is nice and wet and stays together. I'm starting off with just this donut shape. If your donut is chocolate, maybe you could use you know, more of a dark brown. If you have some other uh, flavor of donut, you can try to make whatever color you think would work best for that. But I just wanted to focus on this kind of light, um, kind of regular glazed type donut color. So I'm making sure to get all of my edges nice and covered. I'm not worrying about the bottom of my donut at all. I will leave that blank. But the sides I do want to have nice solid coverage. And using this wider brush really helps to kind of get into all of those areas. I did not dip my brush in water at all before painting. I just went straight in with the acrylic paint. You can see the bottom is still white. I just wanna make sure that the edges have paint on them. I'm gonna go ahead and put my donut on a piece of paper for now so I don't get my table all covered in paint. Now I'm gonna work on the top. So I wanted to rinse out my brush with water, make sure I get all of that brown color off and I'm just wiping it on the edge of the cup. And then I decided that I wanted some pink frosting so we're gonna go for maybe like a strawberry type donut or pink donut. Those are so good. This is making me hungry. I think the next time I do a project like this, I may have to eat a donut while I work because this is making me crave some donuts. All right, so I'm going around my donut with pink frosting. And just like I was really worried about those outside edges, I'm gonna be really paying a careful attention to my inside edges of the donut as well. I could have added a little bit of that glazed donut color on the inside of my donut too, but I decided that my frosting is just gonna cover all of that up. So I'm really trying to get a good coverage on the top, trying to be careful not to rip the toilet paper. It still is somewhat fragile, so I'm trying to be gentle as I paint kind of just dabbing at the donut. I'm trying to get good coverage on the top and then now after I get all of the top covered, I wanna make sure to really go right up next to my line where I glazed and that's where I wanna kind of take my time and make sure I get a nice solid line frosting versus donut. So. Um, again, this big brush is perfect for that because I can, you know, try to create a nice smooth transition from 
the frosting to the donut. Get that little variation. If you want to get really creative, you could make more of like a swirl type frosting on it or there's a lot of different donut decorations that are going on too. So you can really get creative with the, the flavor that you choose. Just trying to get a nice good coverage of my strawberry pink frosting. And it looks like I about had all of the areas covered so there's no more white toilet paper showing except on the very bottom of course which we won't see I'm just making sure to get into any of those little nooks and crannies that are in there from my toilet paper sculpting and then now I'm going to put that brush in the water and switch to a smaller brush now I am a huge fan of donuts with sprinkles, so I just wanted to add sprinkles to my donut by creating these little lines of color all over my frosted area. And you can see I did not even wait for my frosting to dry. I'm just making sure to use enough paint that it will cover the pink. So depending on the color of frosting you have, like if you have really dark chocolate frosting and you're wanting to put like light yellow sprinkles, you may have to wait longer for your frosting paint to dry before adding details. Now there are a lot of other things that are on top of donuts um, like Oreos or like swirls or I'm sure that there are tons and tons of different choices. I've been to lots of fun donut places that have all kinds of fun toppings. So you can get really creative with this and design your own or maybe do some kind of toppings that you've had in the past, whatever. Let those creative juices flow. I am now going in with my second color of frosting, which you can see is kind of a turquoise blue. And I'm just trying to vary which way I put my sprinkles. I said frosting before, I meant sprinkles. And my turquoise blue sprinkles, my purple sprinkles, I'm gonna rinse my brush, and of course add some yellow sprinkles too. I'm gonna get lots of paint on my brush, and then you can see I'm just kind of dragging it across to get that nice sugar sprinkle effect. Now you could do little dot sprinkles too. I was going for the regular kind, little rainbow sprinkles. If you weren't hungry before, you are probably hungry now. This donut is almost looking good enough to eat. Thank you so much for joining me in this donut sculpting and painting project. I cannot wait to see how you do with this toilet paper sculpting. It's so fun and of course so easy and accessible. Everyone has toilet paper around somewhere. You can get very creative with what you can sculpt. So I'm gonna finish up adding these sprinkles and I will call this a masterpiece. Hope to see you again soon.